And I want to bring in Sung Wong Song. He uh, joins us now from Los Angeles. He's a professor of economics at California State University Channel Islands. Uh, let's start with President Xi's visit to Ecuador. As Paulo mentioned, first visit by Chinese president since diplomatic ties established. These trade and economic uh, cooperation deals. Uh, how would you describe it? Uh, sounds like uh, it's been uh, very uh, productive. Uh, China needs uh, oil and then other uh, natural resources from uh, uh, Ecuador. And Ecuador needs uh, Chinese uh, money investments and in infrastructure and, of course, the uh, development of uh, energy and oil as well. So I think it's a you know, mutually beneficial relationship, and uh, uh, it sounds like it went pretty well. Professor Sung, uh, give us an APEC uh, preview, if you will. There really seem to be two stories coming from this gathering. One. China pushing to finalize this free trade area of the Asia Pacific. Let's start there. Uh, talk to me about that and, and how do you see that developing as a story? Well, uh, you know, I think uh, the issue is uh, Mr. Trump's uh, pronouncements about the trade. Uh, and uh, he has uh, decided to give up uh, TPP. As a result, uh, attention is being focused on really two things. One is uh, called C uh, RCEP, which is a regional uh, comprehensive economic uh, uh, partnership. Uh, that is one. The other one is uh, something which is broader called the uh, FTAAP, which essentially includes all 21 countries in the uh, uh, APAC. And uh, uh, most people seem to assume that the uh, United States is uh, taking a back seat uh, after the election, and then uh, China is taking a uh, leadership role in the driver's seat. Now, I think that is not quite the case, but that is what people are talking about right now. Well, so let's, let's go there. You, you brought up uh, the TPP, uh, President Obama going there. He had pushed for this. Of course, as you mentioned, Trump opposed it. Uh, that was pretty much the centerpiece of his campaign. How awkward will this uh, final APEC gathering be for the U.S. president? And what does he need to do to kind of calm some of the fears of, of, of these other countries? Well, I think, you know, first of all, uh, we shouldn't uh, put 100 uh, percent emphasis on uh, campaign rhetoric. Uh, and during the heat of the campaign, a lot of things are said. Uh, but, uh, you know, apparently, uh, Mr. Trump's uh, core uh, campaign promise is uh, to uh, uh, bring more jobs to the United States. And he thinks that uh, he can do that by uh, modifying the trade agreements. Uh, I think what's important is that I don't think, uh, you know, President-elect uh, Trump is an isolationist. Uh, he wants trade deals, but uh, better trade deals for the United States. And so that's he talked about uh, America first. And so uh, it's important for uh, President Obama, uh, you know, to explain uh, to the nations, the uh, 21 nations, well, 20 nations, including uh, now the United States, that uh, America is not really uh, being an isolationist. Uh, we want the trade deals, but, uh, you know, better deals uh, when it comes to uh, intellectual properties, uh, environment, uh, and some of the other things. Of course, there are labor laws in the United States, which uh, Mr. Trump would like to uh, adhere to as well. But as you said, it seems as though there are these two competing images of these two major powers. One, China building bridges, of course, the Belt and Road Initiative. And the U.S. kind of having this pullback position. And, and we're not just seeing it uh, with the U.S. And I know you said it's a lot of campaign rhetoric. We, we still have to wait to see what actual, the actual President Trump will be like. But we're seeing this with Brexit. We're seeing a lot of kind of uh, countries moving inward. How does that affect uh, global trade? Uh, global trade, I think, uh, you know, will suffer. And then uh, global trade, as a matter of fact, has been moving sideways to uh, down in recent uh, years. And uh, if we uh, take more protectionist policies uh, going forward, uh, that will further hurt uh, global trade and, and global economic growth and activities. And uh, that, that is not going to be good for the United States or, for that matter, any uh, country involved in trade. So, you know, I hope that uh, we can come to some sort of an agreement so that we can uh, promote trade. Uh, and again, the United States, I don't think, will uh, just be an isol isolationist. If you talk about the countries involved in uh, APAC, uh, many of those countries, they depend on the United States for security guarantees and also for economic prosperity. So uh, I assume that uh, there will be some tough negotiations going forward. I don't think it will be a case of simply the United States giving up and China taking, uh, you know, taking up the slack and uh, being the driver's seat. Professor Song, thanks so much for your observations. Joining us from Los Angeles live there. Appreciate it.